now that's talking about becomes really important to every business owner, which is sales. Mark Hooper is the founder of Sales XL and has over 30 years experience working in sales and marketing roles within a wide variety of local and multinational organisations. For the past 20 years, he has worked as a consultant specialising in sales performance improvement programs and marketing strategies. Please welcome Mark Hooper to the Bit of a change that I often, uh, I've, I've had to do this a couple of times where I followed someone who's got such a great passion for what they do for the community. And um, I guess I'd like to sort of think of that, to start this off as a segue is how do you take that passion that you have about your business and apply it to help you generate a better world for your clients? Because I think all of us in the room think we do something that makes life better for other people. Maybe not quite as good as uh, Angela's group, but in our own little way, we help, we help out. And so, <clears throat> what I'd like to do today is just talk to you very briefly about what I think are the key to being successful in selling. And selling to me is a very broad sort of comment. It's really how do you talk to your customers and how do you get them to engage with If you can sort of take that. And, um, I was uh, once told by some of this, there's only two ways to improve your business. You either cut your costs or you increase your revenue. And then if you want to increase your revenue, there's really only four ways to do that. You can get more opportunities. So you can just get more people coming in and buying from you. And so your lead generation and all that sort of stuff, that, that's really good and you can do that. So you can also sell more. So when someone comes to see you, you can sell them more stuff. You know, would you like fries with that? The classic upsell, cross-sell, um, sell the next model up rather than the model you've got, that type of thing. So that, that'll also work for you, right? So the other thing you can do is you can actually sell faster. So one thing to do is to just, um, if you sell, you know, 100 in a week, if you sold 120 a week, because you're able to get people through the door and moving through your process faster, then that would also uh, work out, right? Um, the other bit around there is actually to sell, increase your win rate. So, you know, you have people come in and they will, some will buy from you and some won't. Now, the average is somewhere around 30 to 40 percent in a B2B environment. So I'm not sorry, B2C, sometimes that'll, that'll change quite a lot depending on your, on your business. But in a B2B, it's around 30 to 40 percent of people will buy you. Increase that by a few percentage points, you'll sell more stuff. So, <coughs> what I encourage people to first think about is well, what one of those ways, or which ones of those ways, are you actually employing in your business? Are you just trying to get more people through the door, or are you trying to get more people to buy a bigger amount of stuff from you? So, and the others as well. So that's the first thing I would suggest to you is have an idea of the, have a plan about that. The second one is know the buying process. So most of us forget that it's really all driven by the buyer. So your customer. So how do they engage with you and when do they engage with you in the buying process? So. There's a whole lot of people out there not in your market, not interested in buying from you, they're happy with what it is, that's great. And then something will happen, so what I call a sales trigger, something happens to them that makes them want to come and buy from you. You should know what those sales triggers are. Then they start to get aware of the various things that are wrong. So the reason that this happened is because and they may go online, or they may talk to their friends, or they may actually call in at your shop or give you a call. Depends. So they go through an awareness phase. Next phase is they then consider what would work for them. Right? What are the options? Then they decide what they're going to do. They may decide to do nothing. But let's assume they're going to decide to buy. They're going to decide which one of the options are best for me. And most people do not go and just buy the first thing they see. They do tend to go out and, and talk to a number of different people. And then finally, and this is one that I also think a lot of people forget about, is what happens once they're bought from you? How do you keep them 
and how do you make them either repurchase or recommend you to their friends, or both, which would be great. So, you know, in the, in the end, I think that's how it didn't work for me, and I'm not prepared to, re to recommend. Now, really simple, but again, think about where you engage with your buyer. Now, the problem today is that we've all got mobile phones, and I'm looking around here, and there's a whole load on the desk. <coughs> In my, you know, I started off selling in the 80s and I had all the information. So if you wanted to know about the stuff I sold, you had to call me because I held all the data. Now, that's not true. The internet, Google has all the information. So people often get over 50% of their buying process done before they engage with something. And so think about your marketing and your lead generation and how you take people through that process when perhaps they're not doing it face to face with you. And that's a real challenge, right? But, but something you need to be aware of. And I find just a really simple buy process like that, a way to start thinking about how do I engage? How does my website work? How does my shop work? How does my referral network work? Whereabouts do I pick up people and what do I have to encourage them to move from where they are now to the next stage? So that's pretty simple. That's my first step. Oh. And then that's, that was supposed to say, where do you impact that? So I was quite grabbing for that. I probably should have put this first. But be enthusiastically interested in the person you're trying to sell to. Don't sell. So when you meet someone, don't sell to them. Nothing turns people off more than you trying to push some product or service at them. It's horrible. Even if they want you to sell to them, I would encourage you to spend some time not selling. Get to know them. You know, your, your, your elevator pitch, and I know a lot of people have it, and, and we encourage people to have one, right? But try to move straight from your pitch, if someone says, what do you do, to what do you do? Don't talk about yourself. Find out more about that person. So, no sales pitch. Elevator pitch at best, move on. Don't think of yourself as a salesman. Think of yourself as someone that's just enthusiastically interested in people. And there are just three types of questions that I think are really useful. Yeah. What do you do? How do you do it? When do you do it? Nice and open. Nice and easy to do. So again, when you walk around the room, we're all here to pitch our business. But I would encourage you to get to know the person you're dealing with to build trust and rapport before you start flogging your stuff. And then my third tip is know what makes you different. We are all different, and that's great. And you know, in this room, you may have some competitors, right? And you certainly have competitors in the greater world, right? What makes you different? and know what they are. The other bit is, um, I have a nice little grid there that, that's available there. And, um, when you're thinking about differentiators, think of two things. What's unique? And is that valuable to the customer? The problem that we find when we talk to people is they know what's unique, but they don't understand this. And often what they're selling is what we have called cool stuff there. I have another word for that, but I'm not going to use it for a video. Um, right? But it starts with C, the second letter, the second word. Right? And um, the, what people try to flog is cool stuff. And the problem with cool stuff is you think it's great, but the customers think it's not great. And they aren't interested in it. So get you your differentiators or things that you think are different and apply that grid to it and see if they really work out. Are they really unique? And are they really different? And then finally, how do you prove that they're unique? Right? Because a lot of you will come up and I, I run a lot of sessions with sales teams and they say, oh, this is our unique thing. And I say, oh, that's great. But I don't believe you. Right? And prove it to me, show me. Is it a demo that you need to do to show me? Is there some sort of um, something that you have that shows me the, you know, sort of 
skeptical consumer think this really is different and this really does make a lot like that. So I know you differentiate. So this is my summary slide. Know the buying process and how you can influence it. Be enthusiastically interested in your customers. Know your differentiators and how to express it and how to show your customer that they create value for it. So anyway, that's my few tips. Um, if you're interested in talking more about it, obviously I can't talk about this forever. But um, thank you very much. <laughs>